Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, a developer advocate here at Google Cloud. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use Migrate for Anthos to migrate IBM WebSphere applications to containers in just a few clicks. We'll start by looking at the system requirements, then I'll provide a quick overview of the migration process, then we'll jump into an actual migration. Now this video is part of a series on Migrate for Anthos. So if you haven't checked out those first videos in the series, you might want to go back and watch those as this video builds on them. You can find the link in the description. Before we get started, I wanted to clarify that in this video, I'm discussing the migration of traditional IBM WebSphere application server and IBM WebSphere application server network deployment applications rather than IBM WebSphere Liberty apps. Keep that distinction in mind when you hear me say WebSphere application server. Migrate for Anthos lets you modernize app workloads running in WebSphere application servers by converting them to application containers. You can then deploy the app containers to GKE or Anthos clusters on Google Cloud, Anthos clusters on VMware, and Anthos clusters on AWS. A WebSphere application server VM can contain multiple apps. Migrate for Anthos helps you automate the modernization of WebSphere application server apps to containers by discovering deployed apps in the source VM and automatically suggesting the configuration for the modernization. With Migrate for Anthos, you migrate each app to its own container. This allows you to test and deploy the migrated apps individually rather than having to test and deploy multiple apps together. Regardless of whether or not your source apps were running WebSphere application server or WebSphere application server network deployment, the resulting container image will be the official IBM WebSphere application server traditional container image. And for those of you wondering, the original responsibilities of network deployment, clustering, scheduling, version rollouts, request routing, et cetera, will now be offloaded to Kubernetes. Migrate for Anthos supports the migration of apps hosted on the following versions of IBM WebSphere application server. WebSphere application server traditional 8.5.5.x and WebSphere application server traditional 9.0.5.x. Migrate for Anthos extracts two types of configurations from the VM, the configuration for each application and the configuration of the target profile, which defines the runtime environment of a WebSphere application server, including ports, the Java virtual machine settings, et cetera. The Migrate for Anthos software automates the use of the IBM WebSphere application server migration toolkit for application binaries to discover, assess, and generate migration reports, as well as creating configuration scripts. Before you can start a migration, you must upload the toolkit to a Google Cloud storage bucket in your account. Check the documentation for more information on this procedure. When migrating WebSphere application server apps, the processing cluster can be deployed on Google Kubernetes Engine or an Anthos cluster on Google Cloud, VMware, or AWS. Regardless of where the cluster runs, it must use a cloud storage bucket as the repository for the resulting migration artifacts. For more information on creating a processing cluster, check out the first video in this series. You can find the link in the description below. And be sure to read the docs to get the full details on all the system requirements. With the prerequisites out of the way, let's take a look at the general migration flow. First, you're going to add a migration source, which represents the source platform from which you will be migrating. Then you're going to create the migration, and that specifies the VM you're actually going to migrate. You'll edit your migration plan, including selecting the WebSphere application server app that you want to migrate. And you should migrate one WebSphere application server app per migration. Then you're going to actually perform the migration to generate the app container artifacts and then review those artifacts in preparation for building the deployable app image. Now use the migrated artifacts to build the container for your migrated app and then deploy your migrated app to your target cluster. Finally, test the migrated app and validate the migration. Note that if your source VM has multiple apps, you're going to need to repeat steps three through seven for each application you wish to migrate. Also, you may have noticed if you've watched previous videos, there's not an explicit step to assess the application using the discovery tool. That's because the assessment happens when you run the migration. All right, let's go ahead and jump into an actual migration. We're going to take a source VM and extract a single application from that VM, then deploy it to a GKE cluster following the basic flow that I just outlined. 
As you can see in the cloud console, I've actually already created my migration processing cluster and my migration source. I've also gone in and I've stopped my WebSphere VM. With those things out of the way, I'm all ready to start by creating the actual migration. And to do that, I'll move into the cloud shell and issue the migctl create command. Most of these parameters are pretty straightforward, but I wanted to point out this app type property at the bottom. That's where we specify that we're actually migrating a WebSphere application. Creating the migration is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when it's done. With the migration assessment completed, I wanted to show you the application discovery report that was generated. It's stored up in a cloud storage bucket, so let's navigate to the actual report and load it up. Now, I'm not going to go through the report in detail. I just want you to know that it's available to you and that will give you a bunch of information on the applications that were scanned. Let's move back into Cloud Shell, and I need to download and edit my migration.yaml. So I'll use migctl get migration, and then I'm going to go in and edit that file. And here are these path variables. Now, they represent the applications that were found during the scanning process, and I only need one of them. You only migrate one application at a time. So I'm going to delete this query.ear path location here. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to go down to the default app name and change that from WebSphere to something else. So I'll make that change here and I'll actually make the change uh, for the name of the Docker image that's created as well. We use migctl to upload our updated migration plan so that when we execute the migration in the next step, these new settings are used. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll clear the screen and then I'm going to use migctl to execute the migration plan and generate my migration artifacts. This will take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll rejoin when it's done. Migctl is finished, so let's go ahead and grab those artifacts using migctl get artifacts. I will list out the directory so you can see which was created. We've got a Docker file, our application's ear file, and this wsadmin.py file. This is where a bunch of settings for your application will be held, and you may need to edit that depending on your application. Finally, there's a build script that automates the creation of our Docker image and uploads it to the container registry. I'll go ahead and execute our build script. The build file takes several minutes to run. I've sped up the video so you can see what's happening in the background. It's going to pull the base Docker image, then it runs through the configuration of the WebSphere server, including copying in the application, and then finally it pushes that completed container image up into the registry. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit the deployment.yaml file, which by default provides a headless cluster IP service, which is only accessible from within the cluster. I'm going to change that to type load balancer so we can access our service externally. All that's left to do now is to actually deploy the application, and we'll do that using kubectl apply minus f deployment spec.yaml, and that's going to deploy that deployment spec we just looked at. So we're going to create a service, we're going to create a deployment, and then we can check the status of those by using kubectl get pods and kubectl get service. Now from the service, we can grab the external IP address here and see that our application, a movie rental service, is up and running in our web browser. And that's all it takes to migrate a WebSphere application running in a VM to running on Kubernetes. There you have it. We've successfully migrated an application from WebSphere application server running in a VM to a container running on GKE. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe as we'll be adding additional videos to the series. And feel free to check out Migrate for Anthos up on Google Cloud today.